Hi, thank you for joining us today. With us is Samantha Conyers, the Chief Experience Officer at First Retail Group. How are you doing today? Hey, Ben, I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you for joining us all the way from Trinidad. We really appreciate your time. Why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are, where you're from, and your path to becoming a CX leader? Yeah, absolutely. So, as I mentioned, currently, I am the Chief Experience Officer at First Retail Group. First Retail is the leading franchise operator in the Caribbean. Um, so currently, I'm having a lot of fun in the retail space. Brand new to the retail space, I, like everybody else, probably started, like my first job was in retail selling costume jewelry. Um, but after that, I went on to study economics in university. And then I worked in London for a year, London, England. And then after London, I came back to Trinidad where I got into insurance. I actually started as customer experience manager in an insurance company. And that role was a really transformative role for me because when they first hired me, the role was customer relations officer. Um, and I had the best boss at the time and I convinced her that we should change the title to customer experience. Now, not to age me too much, but that would have been... Probably around 2006, 2007. So CX was really just taking off. And I had the opportunity to learn about CX in my role in London. I worked, I had the opportunity to work at a bank in London and they had a company experience team. So back in Trinidad, I, I was able to convince them to give me the CX title. And from there, I went on to become head of customer experience at Digicel Trinidad and Tobago. Digicel is one of the leading telecommunications and connectivity companies in the Caribbean and then started my own business as a CX consultant and now here I am in retail. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. You know, you have all this vast experience um, and you've worked your way up, which I, I really think is admirable. What advice do you have for somebody their first 100 days of leading a team of CX people? I actually really like that question and it really resonates with me because my approach has always been to try to have a plan. I think, unfortunately, as CX professionals, the, the, quite often the tasks can be quite superficial or perceived as fluffy, right? So if you don't have an anchor to that plan, if you don't have a solid structure and strategic approach to your plan as a CX leader, um, you can really sort of fall into that fluffy perspective. So for me, the first first hundred days or the thirty six to ninety day plan is sort of broken down in always starting with a current state assessment. Um, you know, I've said this time and time again throughout my career. I don't believe in a generic approach to anything. So, you know, as a consultant, one of the big requests I used to get all the time, especially you know, being in the Caribbean, which is Seen as very service oriented, you know, we used to get requests all the time, you know, come and train our staff, you know, do some customer service training. And people always used to be taken aback when I'm saying, well, no, I don't, I don't believe in a generic approach to customer service training, much as I don't believe in a ge generic approach to marketing or product positioning. So I think for me, it really has to start with a strong and structured current state assessment, get to understand the business. Understand the challenges and how you can flip those challenges into opportunities. And of course, as equal importance is get to know the key players and the key stakeholders in the business. And understand who are going to be your allies, um, who's going to be a little bit more challenging to overcome, um, who you know you're going to be able to lean on to make change in the business. Because I think you know, and I again, this is something I've said quite often. As a CX practitioner, you're quite almost always the de facto change agent in the business. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that you, you sort of start with a great, thorough understanding from the ground up. Mm -hmm. that, that makes a ton of sense. And now that you've gotten that understanding, if you've gone through your first 100 days, what is your current strategy in your role? Yeah, my, my current strategy, to put simply, is inside out. Um, Again, in the retail space, it's, it's a lot of fun because it's B2C. So, you know, I've worked in a lot of B2B industries as a consultant. You know, I was B2B to B. Um, so being on the front line, again, has given me so much, so much energy and excitement. And to be quite honest, a real sense of fulfillment. But 
you know, again, I think that from an inside out approach is critical. So aligning the team in terms of what we want to accomplish as an organization and, you know, being in a, in a leadership position, I think you have to be really mindful of how you as a leader or how you as a leadership team, how you align and how you cascade those messages, those behaviors, uh, those values down to your team members. So, you know, for us at First Retail, what we've been working on is real inside out stuff. So, for example, vision, mission, and values. And, you know, I have gone through so many phases in my own career in terms of how, you know, how I approach vision, mission, and values. And right now I'm very into it. And very into it, again, I think because I'm dealing with such a large complement of frontline staff. And, you know, in retail, again, you have to remember it's a lot of people's first job. So, you know, they're really excited to join a company and they're really excited to be part of something bigger. And I think values is sort of, you know, a great anchor to hold people to in terms of this is who we are as a group. And, you know, when you use those values to determine your behaviors and to determine what we respect and what we reward and what we recognize, it, it really fosters the culture of the business. Mm -hmm. And the, the customers feel that, right? It's going to resonate Absolutely. down to the customers. Nice. How do you measure that success? That seems pretty ambiguous, but you know, what, how do you put a number on that if you can? Yeah, absolutely. You're spot on. You can't. I, you, so you can't yeah. put a, a number on values. So what we're working on right now from a numbers perspective is performance management mm -hmm. and looking at the variables in the performance appraisal form. So what do we recognize? So again, in a retail organization, you can fall victim really quickly to just recognizing sales numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, sales numbers, attendance, conversion, sort of the typical sales KPIs. So my role has been to layer on the customer-centric KPIs to those sales and operational KPIs that already existed in the business. So implementing things like customer feedback tools, employee satisfaction tools, employee satisfaction metrics. So, um, you know, one real example would be in the performance appraisal process, allowing store associates to give feedback on their manager and then mm -hmm. holding the managers accountable in their performance process, right? So really um, inside out and bottom up approach. That, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and this, it's a very vast approach, you know, it's got to be difficult. What pain points do you have? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, that's a money question. So to be honest, Ben, I have a lot of pain points, right? I think Great that game. where we're really lucky from, again, from a group perspective, obviously I'm going to buy a say, but we represent some of the best brands in the world. Um, so we represent the likes of Aldo, Aeropostal, Bath & Body Works, Cole Han, Levi's, La Citan, Psycho Bunny, Sketches, Victoria's Secret. Uh, for, so we represent international brands that are very supportive some more so than others but you know on the whole they offer a lot of data a lot of training a lot of tools and assets that we trickle down to the team and you know when i think about pain points it's actually not in my opinion customer service from our business perspective so our customer service is it's not the best it's not you know world class but it's definitely not been my priority at the moment. My priority has not been that customer service training. Or, you know, as a CX consultant, a lot of people have asked me, like, oh, how many journeys have you mapped since you've been, you know, since you've been here? How many surveys have you executed? And I think they're always quite surprised when, they, you know, I'm like, well, I've actually mapped any one journey and um, I have not really implemented any surveys of customer feedback yet because Again, from a pain point perspective, it's I've really had an inside out approach. So understanding and clearly documenting internal backend processes in terms of how are we going to support these ideal customer journeys. Mm -hmm. So really getting the back right, really working with the teams, working with the people. Um my biggest my biggest pain point or challenge has been recruitment and understanding Ooh, right where and how to find the right people and how to onboard people in the right way. Because I personally believe that, 
you know, if, if I bring somebody on board and they don't work out, uh, that's not a them problem. That's a me problem. Mm-hmm. Um, I have failed. I have failed them in the recruitment and, and in the onboarding, in the onboarding pipeline because, you know, I, I really believe in bringing people on board to fit and to thrive rather than to fail. Mm-hmm. No, that makes a lot of sense. Um, with all of these pain points, you got a lot going on, right? I'm sure ton, tons of stuff go right. You know, a lot of people can have issues getting the C-suite to buy into what you're doing. You know, do you run into those issues with your group? Yeah, I mean, I would love to say no, but yes, definitely. And uh, I've been, again, very blessed at, in my career to have worked with some very strong CEOs. And uh, my current CEO now, who's the founder and managing director, so my current boss, he is very hands-on and very committed to growth he's really committed to growth and sustainability from a business perspective um but the reality is it's change right and change is never linear um everybody likes to think it's you know you kind of just mm-hmm. look like this but you know it's a roller coaster right so the team on the whole i would say has been very supportive and and, and really on board but definitely you have to be mindful of those you know the change process and you know the let's Let's be honest, you know, I'm new to the team. So, yeah, I definitely experience the forming, storming, norming, performing, and adjourning, right? I'm definitely, I'm definitely a little bit between storming and norming. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> well, it's good you're growing, right? And they're, they're keeping you Absolutely. around, which is a really good sign. Uh, do you have a specific example of um, when you utilize customer feedback to improve the company? Absolutely. So, we haven't had as a as a group we haven't had any structured feedback mechanisms in the past before i joined um and you know when i looked at the current data structure or customer relationship management positioning so how how were we positioned in terms of understanding who our customers were i realized that that was a longer game plan um for lack of better words, right? Yeah, I can definitely stick up a QR code in the store and ask the customer to scan for a phone to pick up feedback and so they don't receive it. But I really didn't want to take that, again, generic approach. So one of the things I did quite early on, I think just about three months in, was I initiated a mystery shopping campaign mm-hmm. where I told nobody but the managing director and our head of operations um, that, hey, we're, we're going to do a mystery shopping campaign, three visits, first store over the next two weeks. Uh, and that was actually very insightful for us. Um, mm-hmm. Because, of course, the world is small. The Caribbean is smaller. So Trinidad is a dot. So yeah. I can't assess the level of service in my own stories. You know, of course, the minute I walk in there, it's, hi, welcome to the store. Hi, mm-hmm. Sam, how are you? You know, as soon as they see me, they're awesome. I think they're all great. Um, but, you know, they, they know exactly who I am and they know what my objectives are. So we initiated on a mystery shopping campaign and I made sure to set the team up for success as much as possible in that, you know, I shared with them their expectations repeatedly. You know, hey, guys, as store managers and store associates, this is what's expected of you. You know, I expect every customer to be greeted within 20 seconds of walking into a store. I expect this, you know, so I laid out the expectations so mm-hmm. consistently over a couple of weeks uh, before the mystery shopping exercise. Because I didn't, again, I really didn't want to set the team up for failure. You know, I'm new, I'm new in the business. I didn't want to come out, uh, you know, gun slinging, really tough, uh, really critical. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, the mystery shopping exercise definitely highlighted some challenges as it related to customer service, to efficiencies as well as to things like visual merchandising. So, you know, stores mm. that we thought uh, customers would have been perceiving as, you know, really clean and modern and, and tight as it related to how stock was positioned, the customer's perception was very different or the mystery shopper's perception was very different in that they felt like, you know, shelves were overpopulating and it was difficult to shop here because it had too much skews. So that was very insightful for me. Again, especially being pretty new to retail or very new to retail, it was really insightful for me to see it from the Mr. Shopper's perspective. And then again, to use that as a baseline, right? So I presented the scores to all the stores and all the brands. Um, and I, I, I positioned it as their baseline. So they know now where they started. And then we use that to set targets. So 
So again, non-sales related targets, but now they have targets in terms of the level of service that we expect them to deliver, um, the efficiency of the greeting, the time of the greeting, etc. That makes a lot of sense. I have a, I have an off topic question. It's this is just purely my ignorance in, in what you do. So uh, yeah. you guys are working with major brands. You mentioned like Aldo. Let's use them for example. Do they dictate um, where stuff goes in the store and like the experience that happens within the store, or is that something you guys do as managing that retail outlet for them? Yeah, it's definitely not an ignorant question. It's a great question. Um, it's a question I ask every week. But some brands are different than others. Aldo is a great example because the international brand is actually just here. And they are crazy, supportive, amazing company to work with. I mean, Aldo has principles from, you know, they have a customer service principle called Stay Bold, where everything is an acronym. Uh, they're very hands-on with our store managers. And they share a lot of tips and tips, again, from everything from recruiting to the after sales experience. So they're an awesome brand to work with. While at the same time, they give us our flexibility. So they will give us guidelines, but they will 100% say, hey, you guys know your market. You guys know your customers. You need to, these are guides. These are not, it's not like militant forced on you. You have to adapt the guides to suit your market. Because mm -hmm. every store is shaped differently, right? And I have different square feet. And they couldn't dictate all of that. That'd be a very tedious exactly. task. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, great. Thanks for that. Uh, I'm going to switch gears yet again. Uh, this is one of my favorite questions we ask. You know, what do you think is the future of customer experience? I think the future of customer experience is predictive um, in a very measured way. So one of my mentors is Richard Owen. Richard Owen is the co-creator of the Net Promoter Store. And, uh, you know, Richard has recently launched, well, not recently, Richard has a business called OCX Cognition. And part of that business is a system called Spectrum. And uh, when you see the ability to take data from an operational perspective, from a traditional CX perspective, from a sales perspective, from a CRM perspective, and put that data into a model to forecast uh, the kind of behavior that your customer might have, the predictive churn, predictive upsell, how to personalize. Um, it's really powerful to see with these sort of systems and what this technology can do for customer experience. While on the flip side, I'm really cautious of um, over-automating everything. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like we have to use technology to shorten the route to what our customers actually want. And a lot of the times what they actually want is a human connection you know so i worked in telecommunications for a long time and everything was idr idr send them on the idr and you know i always <laughs> used to push back but what's ivr mean for those who might not know oh, sorry yeah um interactive voice recording so thank you for calling yeah. business a if you'd like to talk about your bill press one have you recorded these before so, you're very good at it <laughs> i know i have yeah. no i'm just kidding <laughs> i haven't um but you know again for me Technology should be used to shorten the routes to what the customer wants. And a lot of the times, businesses totally miss that mark, right? What does your customer want? They want a resolution to a query. Well, an IVR is a great way to do that, or technology is a great way to do that if it's built correctly on the back end. Um, so for me, the future of customer experience is moving away from the top layer and digging deeper in terms of working with fellow business units and fellow professionals like the developers and the IT teams and the project managers. You know, I've seen a lot of CX programs and projects fail. Um, you know, full transparency, I've seen a lot of them fail. I've been involved in a lot of them that failed. And it was, it was simply because of lack of project management experience. Um, so it's very difficult to lead change if you have no change management experience or no type of change leadership or project management experience. Um, and then, you know, again, from an agile project management experience, understanding the definition of done. So you as the CX expert may recommend an improvement in the user interface on a company's website, for example, and you find that the website experience is slow and clunky outdated, misaligned, confusing, and you may make the most beautiful recommendations from a UX and CX perspective. But at the end of the day, you are relying on your colleagues in IT and software dev to see that through to execution. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that, that's hard. And then that's why you got to get the C-suite to buy in, right? Because you're not in control of all these different aspects. And it, it, you really are linking departments together and pushing forward for the customer. Oh, that's fascinating. I, I know it's getting late there. Um, so I'll, I'll wrap you up with this one. You know, what else should we know about you and how can we follow your career? Um, well, I think, what else can you know about me? Well, I have two kids. Um, and like I shared that with you before. So from a career perspective, I think like most parents, I am definitely struggling with the juggle of, the, you know, being a full-time working parent and raising two amazing children. And, you know, I think as it relates to my career, what I would say is I am just as interested to connect and network with like-minded people and like-minded professionals, I think, especially in the customer experience space. So I consider myself extremely, extremely lucky to have had the opportunity to connect with the likes of Richard Owen. Um, and I think that, you know, I can, I could really name drop so many people that have been so many amazing to me in my customer experience career that I am really keen to continue to build that network from a professional perspective. Because I think, you know, as cheesy as it sounds, your network is your net worth, right? And mm -hmm. in, in the field of CX, there's been a lot of huge leaps and bounds in the past months and years. And a lot of these people are going unnoticed while the same old people continue to be, continue to be recognized and called. So it's very exciting to have a community like Customer Experience. And, and I'm keen to... to become more involved in that community, give back to that community, learn from that community. That's awesome. And how can we reach out for you if, uh, if we're interested? Yeah, so I'm on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. um, like everybody else. Yeah. Um, my, my LinkedIn name, I can share my LinkedIn um, link, my yeah. LinkedIn handle. Yeah, we'll have um, it in the, the blog. Chat. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and I think that, you know, I'm, I really enjoy the LinkedIn platform. Awesome. Well, that's how I found you. I appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. And until we chat again. Yeah, thank you so much, Ben. It's been a pleasure. Bye.